All right, so it is no secret that FabFilters Pro R is the industry standard when it comes to reverb plugins. And it's been that way since its release until now, because replacing that is now going to be FabFilter Pro R2. But it is not a free upgrade going from the original Pro R to Pro R2. So that leaves the question, is it worth it? That's what we're here to find out. Let's get started. And I do recommend wearing headphones over here for this reverb test. Okay, so first thing obviously I wanna do is turn down the space all the way. No reverb at all. Okay, this sounds pretty good over here. I'm gonna add a bass line over here because it sounds so freaking empty, but we won't be putting any reverb on it. Okay, so what I wanna do over here is actually go get both Pro R and Pro R2. And as you can see over here, I actually don't even own Pro R2 yet. I have not bought it, I'm using the demo and I've still got eight more days on it, so that's why I'm making this video now. But that is good to know that if uh, you wanna try it out first before purchasing it, you can definitely do that. So basically what I figured that we do here is get the exact same settings as close as possible on both plugins. And then from there, we'll go over some of the new features of the plugin. That way you can really see just everything that you're getting from upgrading from one to two. Let's just get a uh, big blue hall. And that still sounds really freaking good. Again, as far as like quality goes, I don't think there's any really big differences. But now let's mute that and turn on Pro R2. And now over here, we actually do have a folder dedicated to the V1 presets. So we can go on over to large and then big blue hall. And as you can see, they're pretty much identical at 3.4 seconds. Uh, but the different bands over here are the same. So the new things that have been brought over to Pro R2 are going to be the different reverbs from modern, vintage, and plate the thickness knob over here, and then the ducking, auto gate, and freeze features. Those are going to be pretty much the only new features here between one and two, which might not seem like a lot, but those five new features do a lot of powerful things over here. All right, so as it says over here, the thickness knob adds an intuitive combination of density and saturation to the reverb sound. But one thing I've been experimenting with is actually decreasing the brightness, giving it less presence, but then also increasing the thickness so we can still have that very full sound. But this sound is a bit more playful, so I think in this case, the brightness actually does go towards uh, helping it. So we can just increase the brightness and the thickness at the same time. Sounds very nice, very rich. Going over from modern to vintage is a, you can hear a big difference on headphones. This sounds like it's more, like, has a lot more depth to it. Plate. I'm not really a huge fan of the plate reverb here. Vintage is definitely where I like to reside. You know, I actually think I want a bit more space over here and more decay rate, so let's go and do that. Yeah, very nice. Okay, now going on over to the ducking over here. Ducking is something that's a bit more for mixing, not so much with uh, creative results over here. But if you do find that your wet signal is now clashing with your input signal, then maybe increasing that one could help out with getting some separation in there. Even minus seven is kind of dramatic, but still not overboard, so I would stick around there just fine. But then going up to the extremes over here to plus 48 dB is going to be where you can hear, start to really hear the ducking. Hear that? So how we can hear the reverb just fine like that? But then increasing, you can really hear it dip down. It almost sounds like the reverb is gone completely. So right there's a good moderate amount. I right, know the auto gate something more for like drums, so we can go over that here in a bit. The freeze feature over here is super cool. So whenever I hit freeze and then hit pause, it'll just keep on going forever with the original sound that I had whenever I hit froze. Making that very useful for more like background pads or a transition even. Going down to like 70 BPM though. Oh, that's so beautiful. That's so nice, man. So let's go get something um, large still. We'll try using plate over here. I do find that plate's good for drums. Which honestly, that sounds great to me like that. And now we can talk about the auto gate feature over here. So in the other video that I made with this plugin, I found this up by accident. I froze that on the snare, okay? Then auto gate. Listen to that, those pockets that it's filling up and oh my God, it's so nice. And that's just on free. We can go over to like one quarter notes, one eighth. Let's go to 100% mix just so you guys can hear what's going on. So if I were to take off auto gate right now, it would still be going on forever. The reverb is still going on, right? Turn that on helps control it. So as it says over here, the intelligent algorithm already has its own automatic threshold attack release settings, but you can definitely tell that's being activated on the kick and the snare. So if you increase the time, that's where you can get those really awesome effects. 
Okay, guys, this is going to be a very simple short video here. That's pretty much the only changes that have come between Pro R and Pro R2. And I don't mean that in a negative way. There are five really, really key new features here, but they all are very powerful in what they offer. So the main changes here that I've gathered from Pro R to Pro R2 are going to be, you're going to get a more full sounding reverb with that thickness knob. Your wet and dry signals are going to blend together better with the ducking feature. And then finally, you're going to get a lot more creative options with the freeze and auto gate features on mainly drums. Is that going to be worth the price tag? That's going to be up to you to decide. For me personally, when the eight days of this trial are over, I do not think I'll be upgrading to Pro R2. If I'm just being honest over here, I love FabFilter and all their plugins, and there are some really great features that they added here with this new edition of Pro R2. But Pro R is definitely still a high, high quality reverb plugin. And as much as I do and really enjoy and appreciate all the features added in Pro R2, it's like I already have 80% of the plugin and I'm paying for the last 20%, which for some people might be worth it. And for me personally, I'm still very tempted, as well as I do offer an upgrade feature. If you look over here, going to FabFilter Pro R2 high end reverb plugin upgrade is 50% off. So you get 84. 50 as opposed to 169. Nice. So that does help out a lot, and some of you might actually really be tempted to do this for only $85. I'm not telling anybody don't, it's a waste of time. It's just for me personally right now, I will not be upgrading. 